to Spotlight, where we feature the University of Central Arkansas's College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences. I'm Donna Lampkin-Stevens. I'm joined today by my friend, uh, Brian Massey, soon to be Dr. Massey, uh, who is the chair of the Department of Art and Design. So welcome, Brian, back to Spotlight. Well, thanks for inviting me back, Don. I always appreciate our time together. It's been a long time, hasn't it's it? It's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> we had that uh, pandemic hiatus. but So lots, is, lots has changed since we uh, talked last. So let's, gosh, within the Department of Art, uh, What's been going on? <laughs> well, since the last time we actually spoke, uh, our department grew by a whole new program. We now have the interior design program into our department, as well as our college, which means additional three full-time faculty and, and three part-time faculty. So let's talk about that. They came from the old department of? Uh, family and Consumer Sciences. Okay, and, and they do interior design, which has always been sort it's of? It's always been art-related, mm -hmm. but they were just sort of stuck in a, a place where they didn't really have their own identity mm -hmm. or their own footprint. And uh, I feel like by having them in our, in our program, give them some identity, art and design, mm -hmm. as well as to give them some sort of um, place to, for branding their, their items and their, their, their oh, techniques yeah. because you know, they, they needed a place to be. So now they're sort of recognized as part of the art and design program because you know the Department of Art was the, one of the original departments here at school in 1907. Okay, and so I bet they were sort of a sort of a new program within the old family and consumer sciences. I mean, they were not there originally. I would they, bet no, they weren't there originally, mm -hmm. and I, I'm not sure how they ended up in that college. In that, that um, it was well, a different I, college. I can understand too. how they ended up because it was called home economics at one point in time. Home economics. Before it came family consumer science, so mm -hmm. it sort of makes sense for interior design to be a part of sure. that. Uh, so it made sense. So uh, that started July 1st. Tell July me. 1st of 2020. How's uh, it gone? It's, it's been a challenging. It's, it's like uh, a marriage with, with, with children. <laughs> so you have your marriage, and you have your marriage, and you have your kids, and your kids. So you try to do a blended family type of thing. So each program is so vastly different that it's hard to, to teach some of the things we do in art into interior design and vice versa because they're two different programs. Well, let's talk about, so how many programs are within the Department of Art and Design now? Uh, basically two. We have art and the art, the art side of it, which includes, you know, your fine arts, art history, art education, and then you have the interior design. Okay, okay. And um, have, we, have we found that some students major, minor, double major within any of these? We have students that, that, that minor in, in family and consumer science, which is now called nutritional family science. Mm -hmm. They change their name. And then we have students of interior design who are art minors. So they can do with they either can within do both, the yes. department. Good, good. So, uh, so three new faculty members, and uh, how many more students did that bring to you? Um, on average, they bring in about uh, between 102 and 109. Okay. It all depends on the semester. Wow. Okay. So it's a big, big department. It's a big department. How many have you got now overall? Uh, students or faculty? Uh, both. Uh, full time and adjuncts all together is 27. 27 faculty, and, and how many students majors? Students with. With all the students told us a little over 300. Wow, that's a big, that's a big good department. Yeah. So, and all that's building toward this new building, the Wingate Center for Fine and Performing Arts. To, I, I see it every day when I walk by, and it's 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 amazing to see the progress. It's going up fast, but not fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. <laughs> we are we are literally busting at the seams now and trying to teach the classes we had. You know, we introduced our new foundation courses this fall. So mm -hmm. we have a new foundations coordinator that we hired. It was supposed to roll out in fall of 2020, but you know with the pandemic, yeah. it shut everything down. Yeah. So we finally got those classes rolled out. All new incoming freshmen takes a certain core classes mm -hmm. in the very beginning, so they're, they're tied in together, um, so that by the time they end of the sophomore year, they can be ready to go to their, their emphasis. Okay. So what are the, those core classes? Just Well, normally they used to be like drawing one, drawing two, mm -hmm. two D design, three D design, uh, art history. But the 18 core as hours they had to take, but now we have what we call Foundation Seminar 1, Foundation Seminar 2, uh, Foundation Studio A, B, C, and D. So in the fall, they take uh, Foundation Seminar 1 along with Studio A and B. Then in the spring, they take Seminar 2 with Studios uh, C and D. So it's, it gets them that, 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 that core and their team taught. So they'll get almost every faculty immediately once they introduce them to those So they classes. feel like they belong. Feel like they belong. Quickly. That's the whole idea is to That's get them right. in, where they feel like they belong get them into their emphasis early. So we try to get them out within that four year time period. Now okay. the exception of that will be the BFA Studio Art degree, which okay. has a, a summer internship attached to it. Okay, okay. And the, the emphasis areas are 
drawing? We are, we are, we're working on a new drawing and painting, a okay. drawing emphasis. Mm -hmm. uh, the main emphasis right now is, is painting, ceramics, uh, sculpture, graphic design, printmaking. Okay, so that's even growing. So drawing is going to be a new one. Drawing, we're oh, working on okay. getting the um, proposal together and submitting it to the Ungraded Council uh -huh. so that hopefully by next fall we have that rolling so that someone's come in. Matter of fact, I, I, I toured a young lady from Southern Illinois who wants to do drawing and painting as an emphasis. So if she came in the old format, she was just painting. But now with the new drawing and painting, we can bring in more students. Great, great. So how, so, so at this point you're at how many different buildings? <laughs> uh, we're in four different buildings and six different floors. <laughs> That's the way I look at it. <laughs> okay, so where are we? We're in... Um... We're in McCaslin. We have McAllister, Shestel, and the College of Business. Wow. What's in the College of Business? Art history. Oh, okay. Because of the pandemic, we need somewhere to spread out, so we okay. were able to find a, a building, uh, a room, auditorium that we could right. use for art history. And so let's talk about the new building. Um, it's supposed to open next fall. Scheduled to finish uh, mid-October, as okay. I was told. Okay. Uh, because of, of 2022. The, of 22, because of the delays, we won't be able to occupy the building until the end of fall 2022 classes okay. in January 23. Okay, okay. So yeah. that's, uh, yeah, a big project like that. Yeah. Uh, so so you will you will then be an all in one building? With the exception of interior design. Okay. Uh, when we uh, began this project, uh, interior design wasn't on the radar because it was still in, um, <laughs> in, in the family and consumer science department. Mm -hmm. um, when they, I knew they were coming over, I had conversation with the architect about is there any way we could put interior design in some of those spaces? And he said, we could squeeze them here and this and that. I said, no, nah, let's not do that. Uh, not without changing the footprint of the building. Right. Uh, not right. gonna make it bigger, because it's gonna cost more. Right. I'm not gonna reduce the uh, class size in, uh, for people who, in fact, has already discussed classrooms and offices, things like that. So um, the idea is to have them to stay in McAllister. Okay, so when they'll we, stay yeah, in when McAllister. When we vacate McAllister, um, the S.A. McAllister, along with Nutritional Family Science. Okay. Uh, Sheets is going to be renovated uh, for the Honors College. Okay. International Engagement and uh, the former Confucius Center, which I think is Chinese Languages and Culture mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, now. So you'll then be in two buildings and they won't be too far apart. No. We're, <laughs> initially, we talked about three stories, but because of the footprint, um, three stories was, would, would not be uh, conducive for the area. So. Okay. Uh, with the main building, did all the 3D, what we call the dirty art, uh -huh. would be in, this, in the building behind it. But we well, would essentially be all in one location. And that's what they're, that's what's under construction now, that building behind, behind the main it, building. Yes. I, I wondered what that was, yeah. so okay. That'll house um, uh, what we call the dirty art, ceramics, mm -hmm. um, sculpture, welding, things like that. Okay, okay. So I understand you've, you've been able to go inside? Uh, yeah, I've uh, formed a relationship with the, uh, the contract manager, um, and he told me anytime I wanted to come out and visit, I could. And so I've occasionally put on my hard hat, my vest, I walk over there and take a tour of it and just see how, how it's going on. So, so tell me, I haven't had a chance to be in there yet. Tell me, um, tell me what it's like to, and to know where you came from <laughs> and how long this building has been needed. <laughs> to, uh, what's it like just to go in there with your hard hat? Uh, just to see the size of the space that we're going to be occupying, it's going to be a game changer. Yes. Not only for the faculty, because you know, I got faculty that would never see each other until we have a faculty meeting. Yeah. At least when we're doing face to face, they would see them one, twice a month. Yeah. If it weren't for that, they wouldn't see each other at all. But by being in that one building, you know, someone in photography, you know, I can talk to somebody in ceramics or in, in printmaking because the offices are located in a central area. And, and, you know, we're doing this in the School of Communication, just thinking about trying to make more connections across disciplines. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And I, was, I had a discussion in my Sculpture One class this morning. You know, it's not about, you know, in real estate, they say the biggest thing is location, location, location. I told them in art, it's not about location, it's not about uh, uh, networking, it's about building relationships. Yeah. Relationships, relationships, yeah. relationships, yeah. because you never know yeah. down the road how that's going to pan out. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, You've moved into, this is your, starting your fourth year. As, this is my fourth year as, as chair. chair. Okay, tell and, me uh, how it's gone. Because you had worked here for a long time before yeah, you moved into administration. Yeah, I, I was on the faculty side for 30 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, knowing going into administration, now I had to change my mindset. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I call it going to the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the running joke is my office in Shiso is Kansas and my office McAllister is Oz. <laughs> That's the running joke. But the biggest challenge for me is uh, the amount of studio time that I lost. Yeah. I still try to maintain that. Yeah. Uh, it keeps me in the studio at, you know, sometimes the midnight. Yeah. Uh, but I, I really focus on the administrative side of it a whole lot because I know that it's important to keep that aspect going and stay on top of things. Yeah. As you know, if you don't stay on top of things, things can get out of hand real oh, yeah. quick. Oh yeah, yeah. So let's talk about your work. Um, we're here in the Baum Gallery and it's, um, it's the, the Baum at 25. So we've got uh, a celebration of, of uh, previous students and- uh, Yeah, they, these are all alumni. Over all the last, alums. We, we selected 25 alumni over the last 25 years. How did y'all do that? How did you? Um, it was a process. Yeah, yeah. It was a process because, you know, some students got in there and they worked there for years and because they can't make a living as artists, find something else to do. Yeah, yeah. I had one who was in art for years and he couldn't make a living. So now he's in real estate selling yeah. houses. So, yeah. But we uh, looked at all the students we had come through here in this program, whether a BA or BFA, um, and invited them to come back. Several of them are teaching school. Mm -hmm. uh, some are working professionally out of their own studios, making work. Uh, and and we just, it was a process, but this is a, a, a culmination of the what we call traditional art. And you sort of see some of the risque art taking place, mm -hmm. which a lot of you see now, a lot of contemporary art is going towards more risque edge of it. Mm -hmm. But it was not traditional, whereas you, know, you got paintings on a wall in frames. Now students are doing just paintings and tacking them up with, with, with yeah. tacks and metal. So yeah. things are changing that yeah. aspect. Well, this piece, when we walked in, I, I said, that looks like a Brian Massey piece. Tell me, tell me about uh, this Hunter one. Brown is a, a BA fine art student, uh, does sculpture. Uh, he wanted to go into sculpture and, and do a, and his first metal, metal fabrication was terrible. <laughs> he just had to learn the, how to, you know, practice his skill set. Yeah. And once he began to practice at it, now he works in just stainless steel and makes these moves okay. all over the country. So he's where is he located now? Uh, I think he's either between Little Rock and Pine Bluff. So he's, he's local? He's still local, okay. yes. Okay, that's yeah. great. When did he graduate? Do you know? I want to say maybe 10 years ago. So not too long not ago. Not too long so. ago. Okay. Yeah. This is wonderful. Yeah. So so uh, talk, let's talk about your work. What have you been able to, I mean, what was your last commission piece? Uh, my last commission piece that I completed is going to go into Hot Springs sometime either this month or next month. Okay, great. It's for a new outdoor sculpture garden. I'm also working on a uh, bronze commission for a private client as well, as well as working on the 2022 Governor's Awards for next year. Oh, excellent, excellent. So, um, well, let's talk about, um, you, you said art is changing. What, let's talk a little bit about that and what- uh, Well, what when I say art is changing, it is, for me it's not changing, I'm old school. Yeah. I'm still yeah. using a hammer and a chisel yeah. and carve stone the old fashioned way because for me it's therapeutic, it allows me to to reflect and think about things and think about the process. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of your contemporary art now is going towards recycled materials, mm -hmm. which like I said, nothing wrong with that. Um, it's a broader It's a broader definition. feel, you know, yeah. Yeah. taking recycled to like styrofoam and plastics and reproduce them into artwork. Uh, to me, they're not gonna be very long lasting items, but mm -hmm. it's, it's, the, it's the nature of the beast, whereas you make art what you can find. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of contemporary media classes are you going towards that direction where you know, go out and find this, find some sticks, find some yarn, find some plastic, see if you can create something from what you already have. Hmm. Hmm. And uh, what, are you, what are you seeing students coming in? Are you seeing still the uh, traditional, uh, they're wanting to do painting or they're wanting to do sculpture? I mean, how, when they get here, what are they wanting? The majority of them want to go into graphic design. That's what they, think, that right? they, that's what okay. they think they can make money, and they can't. Okay. Not tell them, you know, uh, one of the things that we started this semester, Don, that a lot of people don't know about, uh, the business of art class. That's a great, uh, that's I'm, a great I'm, class. I'm yeah. teaching that class, and this past Friday we had a guest come in who's an art agent. Uh, he brokers artwork. He was sharing with them how he got started in the business. Because I wanted him to see it's just more than just painting and sculpture and ceramics and drawing. I mean, you can do all this and you then do it's all in this your house all the time. <laughs> But uh, he brokers deals for, for uh, institutions and banks and things like that. He'll go out and say, okay, you build this $5 million bill, what's your art budget? I think the state of Arkansas has like 1.5% of the total budget should be designated towards artwork. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so he'll find what their budget is and he'll go find them artworks, uh, you know, 
a, a prominent artist. How interesting. Yeah. So is this class uh, a requirement? A new it's requirement? not a requirement, it's an elective. Okay. Uh, the only complaint I get about this class, they say it's not long enough. Oh, it's a I 50 bet. minute class. Yeah. And we get into those conversations, we talk about, you know, doing an LLC, or a DBA, yeah. doing yeah, yeah. fuel corporations, it's gonna be an S corporation or a K corporation. Uh, do you want to become, um, uh, you know, have a, a partnership? Uh, we're talking about tax laws, things that have to do with federal taxes, state taxes, local taxes, know those ins and out. Make sure you get an EIN number. Yeah. Talk, about, talk about all those types of things and, 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 and keeping good records. So Brian, did, did you have a class like that? Did not, I mean. I mean, how did you negotiate this? I was, we were down at UCA downtown, and it was the uh, first uh, annual uh, African American art yeah, show. I remember that. And so I was talking about doing the business of art, how for a long time I wanted to introduce a class like that to, to, to students. And at the time, uh, Dr. Poulter was there, Dr. Williams was there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I could see them nodding their head and shaking. So we had a conversation about, you know, we should really start this class at UCA. I said, yeah, we should, but who's going to teach it? <laughs> They're like, well, won't you teach it? I'm like, I don't really have time to teach it. But I really feel like it was needed because, you know, I learned my business by the seat of my pants, made a lot of mistakes. Yeah. Uh, you know. I and mean, because you come in, I think, especially students come in with dreams of being an artist, but they don't think about the practical. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. the thing about, you know, you start your business, are you a website only business? Are you yeah. a brick and mortar or business? Yeah. Uh, you have to decide on a name, branding, logos, and things like that. How are you going to get your business name out there? So, so what have you, what did you do? Did you create a, a corporation or have you just been an individual? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm an LLC. Okay, LLC. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. For a long time For now? a long time. Uh, it's, it's, it's Sculpture Studio 007 LLC. Yeah. Hmm. I had no idea. That's that's interesting. So, um, and so, is this an upper division class? I would assume it's upper division class, uh, mainly juniors and seniors, those about to graduate. Okay, okay. And you all offered it just this stuff? Just this fall. I'm not sure if I'm doing it in the spring. Okay. My springs are usually busier than my fall, yeah. so we'll, yeah. we'll we'll see. But all the all the students are like, why didn't we have this earlier? Yeah. Even when I mentioned to some of the alumni about the class, they said, I wish we had that class when we were in school. Oh, I bet. I bet. So we're in a new college since you and I talked yeah. last, um, and just sort of what has been the art perspective of moving from the old College of uh, Fine Arts and Communication to the College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences? I uh, initially was not for it because I felt like going from four units to ten units in mm -hmm. a college that we may lose our identity. Mm -hmm and our footprint that we established as the College of Fine Arts and Communication. Mm -hmm. um, but I found that not to be true. I think if anything, we blossomed more yeah. Yeah. by coming into this new college. So let's go through your background here. When you came here, where was art? What department? We were uh, in the Department of Art, and we were in the uh, College of Social Sciences and Health, I believe it was. Social Sciences and Health. Uh, Neil Hattestad was my first dean. Neil Hattestad, yeah. okay. Some people around here will remember yeah. that name. So, uh, so from there, we came, became CFAC? No, we went from there, uh, stayed in that college for a while, we became the College of Arts and Letters. Arts and Letters, okay. Um, they went from the College of Arts and Letters to the College of Fine Arts and Communication. Okay. To where we are now, so yeah. this is my fourth college. Wow, wow. And can you tell, um, what were the advantages and disadvantages of each of those? Uh, we left the uh, College of Science, Behavior Sciences from Neil Halstack as the dean and formed the College of Arts and Letters. The money didn't transfer. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good place to go. It was a good place to be in um, at that time. But uh, no money. <laughs> but no, no money. Uh, money didn't transfer. Oh, wow. So that was the biggest challenge. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I, I got to a point where, as you know, you know, here at the university, the wheels turn very slowly. Yeah. Um, so, I went rogue one time and just approached the organization about donating money for tools and equipment. I mean, stuff and like they that. Did. And they oh, did. Oh, they did. Oh. They oh. did. And I got uh, my hand slapped by the, the, the former people who are no longer here uh, <laughs> in the uh, foundation about that because they wanted to go through them. But I'm like, if I wait on y'all all the time, I can't get things done. But yeah. we need to get things done. Yeah. And I went and just, I won't say I went, I won't say it was rogue, but it's just, you, know, you didn't ask permission. I didn't you ask asked permission. forgiveness instead of permission. I asked permission. for forgiveness after the fact. <laughs> but, you know, we got the money, uh, and, and I was able to divide it up amongst the areas and get a lot of the tools and things we needed. And, and art is a very expensive 
Yeah, we had a conversation this morning. Um, I was telling students, you know, uh, give a good example of the materials we used last fall for my art class for a five gallon unit was $472. This fall, the same unit, five gallon unit is $640. Wow, I hadn't thought about a that. A big jump. Yes. Yeah. The biggest problem is getting materials in because we have to order and the they outside so, and supply chain and a lot of stuff is sitting in the ports. In the harbors. So what are so I didn't even think about those being challenges for you. What are, what are you doing? Uh, we try to substitute other materials when we can, but but there are certain materials for a certain technique. Yeah. You can't substitute for it. Yeah. No. Yeah. I try to be as, as bio friendly as I possibly can for the environment, but there are certain chemicals you have to use to create certain things. Yeah. Yeah. No. Now um, back to something that's so expensive. I mean. You're a sculptor. Do you, do you have a studio at home, or do you work out of out of here? I have a two car two car garage that I used to work out of, okay. but my wife and daughter took that back. <laughs> so it's full of it's her car and my wife's uh, Christmas decorations. <laughs> but uh, I, I used to try to work out of the house, but it got to be so much dust and stuff. Yeah. I put a vent screen, try to protect the keep it from going, but it get into the vent system. But, but so, you need a de dedicated but, space. But I need a dedicated space, and so I, I work mostly here at the hours okay. here on campus. So yeah. when we make the move to the new building, so, so you will be in that, is it a separate building behind the yes. main building? Okay, okay, it's a complex then. It's a complex, yeah. Okay, okay. And so you'll be able to just, that, that'll be uh, the best studio you've uh, probably ever had. It'll be like gravy. I mean, it's <laughs> like uh, going from beer to champagne. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even drink, but that's the way I can, you know, <laughs> I describe bet. it. Yeah. yeah. Um, what about, uh, what, what else have you found about, uh, I mean, why have you found that you've been able to blossom, you think, in, in the new college? I mean, I think we both found that we've had great new colleagues that we didn't know before. That's, that's the key, having new colleagues and being able to collaborate and do things differently. Now, when we were in our former college, you know, the four of us in that college, we all did our own thing. Yeah. Yeah. But now in this new college, like for example, I have co-sponsor an artist in residency uh -huh. with a, a, another colleague in a different, whole different college. Tell me about that. Um, and we, we were, she wrote a AR artist in residency and I was co-sponsored because I was dealing with a lot of the materials and the uh, location to bring in two artists from Haiti. Mm -hmm. uh, and this them. is someone from Languages uh, and Languages and Literature. Dr. Odell Oakley. Ocoli. Ocoli. Yeah. Ocoli mm -hmm. is how you say that. Uh, unfortunately, uh, one of our artists from Haiti won't be able to come. So now, we're, Gail, to bring, we're going to try to bring him in the spring. Gail told us yeah. about that. He, he wasn't able to get right. out after the earthquake. But uh, yeah. uh, the one from New York, um, um, Fabiola mm -hmm. John Luis, she should be able to come in November. Great. So we schedule some, do some work in my studio with my students, uh, as well as try to, we try to schedule a trip to Crystal Bridges to tie it all in. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's one of the advantages I see by having other colleagues in a different college and collaborate mm -hmm. and do ideas and things like that. When you were in the old social sciences, and what was the name of it? Uh, uh, Art and applied sciences and applied science. So, did you find it's been so long I can't remember? <laughs> <laughs> did you find that, or is, is is now just a good time for? Does now just kind of seem like a good time to collaborate more across campus after the pandemic, when things are opening back up? And uh, I, I find it's time now to do that because uh, you're always looking for fresh ideas in art. Mm -hmm. Um, doing things over and over can become stale. Mm -hmm. So if you have fresh ideas by non-art people, yeah. you see things in a different way that you haven't seen before. Do you, um, any interdisciplinary class opportunities for students to be able to do this as well? Well, one of the things we're hoping to do, um, this is in the future, I might not be here when it happens, um, with the new integrated health science building, yeah. is to collaborate with somebody physical therapy, occupational therapy students. And cause you know, in occupational therapy, you work with a patient, you have to sometimes develop a particular type of brace or something for them to use uh -huh. for rehabilitation. Now if we can tie that into that in, in a new building and the maker space. I think we can have a whole new genre of, of thinking about art. How exciting, yeah. how, how exciting. So, um, okay, let's, let's real quickly, before we get to the end, let's talk about, uh, 
what you're moving into. Do you have off? off do you have the the specs for how how many classrooms and how you know how many offices and all that kind of stuff? Let's give a good example of how it's going to work us out. Like currently in the sculpture area, we have three separate rooms, uh -huh. small rooms. You know, we have studio, you have your welding. Then in one room, we have the room for, for wax patterns, for ceramic shell, and for plaster mold making. In a new facility, we're gonna have a room just for wax working. Oh. We have a room just for mold making and a room just for ceramic shell. Wonderful. So to have instead of three in one room, we've got three different studios now. And they'll so be close to each other. They'll be close to each other. And that's the, that's the difference it's gonna make. Uh, instead of having the sculpture studio and the welding room combined, the welding has its own place, the sculpture room has its own place. That's so, right. I'm in three different rooms right now doing like six different things. In a new building, I'll be six different rooms doing six different things. Great, great. And same thing with ceramics? Same thing with ceramics. Yeah. Okay, so, okay. Um, some of the exceptions may be, you, you're not gonna have two painting studios, so it'll be yeah, like one painting. Yeah, but sure. Things like those specialty things like ceramics and sculpture and these those separate rooms, that's what we're gaining in this new facility. And so I think people are driving by and seeing sort of the imprint with the, with, yeah. with the walkway. Where is where's all this stuff going to be like from the from the street level? Will it be in well the at the very the very corner if you, the very corner kind of corner from from the uh, from from Otis the Bear uh -huh. is my office. So I get to look oh, out the okay, window great, great. and see all this Otis every day <laughs> uh, uh, when I'm working. Um, so so those are going to be all offices on that side. It'll or? be the offices, um, the new uh, small gallery. Uh -huh. Um, but uh, we're going to keep the, the bomb here. We'll keep the bomb here. We have a small gallery, nine hundred gallery in that new facility. Along with what we don't have is what we call a collaboration room, mm -hmm. which we're a music theater and art can use those students and come in and mm -hmm. relax, study, do whatever they need to do uh, in that collaboration room. Uh, so it can be set up for small workshops, seminars, things of that nature. But it's going to allow us to um, uh, put a new face on for UCA in the arts, yeah. in the fine arts and in the visual yeah. arts. So uh, it's going to be mostly art, but mostly art. But we shared it with, uh, with music and theater. Okay, and uh, like there will be like a black box theater over there. Black box right? theater will be there uh, as well as a uh, a smaller performance concert hall. Okay, uh, and will those be in different areas of the building or? Is, it's same, it's same, all the same, same building, all the same. Um, okay. One of the cool things about when I walked over there and did a tour. Uh, they order these specifically types of center blocks for the for the theater, uh, the concert hall, uh -huh. and 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 when light hits those at a certain angle, they look three dimensional. Oh, really? It's gonna be so cool to watch that happen inside the concert inside hall. Of, yeah. Okay. When they was building the sunlight, we hit it. You can see it. It looks like they're three dimensional, but they actually flat. Uh, but it's gonna be cool. Now the outside looks. Close to close to done. It's getting close to done. It's and how about the inside? Do, do you? I mean, can you can you tell where you are? When you oh go yeah, in once it? you go, I, I know exactly where I'm at. Okay. Uh, even when they had just a concrete port, I knew where I was. <laughs> I knew where I was standing. Well, Brian, you've had a lot to do with getting this building built, and so my my congratulations and thank my, you. Uh, thank you. Uh, you've got to work for a while to enjoy this now. To after. Yeah, I have a five to seven window. <laughs> I'm looking at. <laughs> Good deal. At least. <laughs> at least. Brian, thanks for joining us on Spotlight today. We'll be back again uh, in you. the spring uh, and, and going forward, and certainly when this new building opens. Hey, we'll do Spotlight over there, right? That'd be great. That'd be great. Thanks, Don. Join us again next time for Spotlight.